All right, so this video was brought to my attention. Um, I'm kind of curious what it's going to be about. Uh, I have a feeling that I might not actually be disagreeing much in this video, but I'm, I am kind of curious. So this is a video from Jillian Michaels. It was just uploaded yesterday from the time of, that I'm recording this. Um, and the name of the video is called Top Tips to Make Eating Healthier Easier. So I'm just kind of curious to see what she says. Like I said, I might agree with a lot of what she says. I have absolutely no idea. I haven't watched the whole video at all. I watched like the first 30 seconds of it. So let's watch it and see what it's about. Some of my top weight loss weight management or just feel more in control over food tips are not food or fitness related. And this is because weight loss and weight maintenance are simple, right? It's eat less, use common sense with your food eating and move more like ding, ding, done. I would, uh, I, I mean, I agree with that. You guys have heard, heard me say many times in the past that weight loss is simple, but that doesn't mean that it's easy, right? Like being in a caloric deficit that's what has to happen for weight loss that's a very simple it's a simple equation for most people right there are outliers but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's easy it's actually very difficult and uh can determining on a lot of other factors it can be much more difficult for one person than another person wow mind-blowing stuff not really <laughs> but it's it's simple but it's not easy right why is it not easy? Well, many of us use food as a coping mechanism or a defense mechanism. We, we use food for a host of emotional reasons. And I, I can get into that. That's, that's, but you know what? If you want me to do a separate video on uh, the emotional side of, of weight loss, leave it in the comments below. Cause that's I agree with that too. Like one thing that I, I, I almost like cringe when I hear it because I'm like, dude, you obviously do not understand how intricate someone's like relationship with food or their um, like how they are connected to food, how how intricate that can be when people are just like, oh, food is just for fuel. It's just to fuel your workouts. It's just like you just need to treat it like that. And I'm just like. It's so much more than that to just so to just say that to someone, especially someone that is struggling with their food and struggling with how they're eating to just be like, no, 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 it's just, you know, just treat it like you're it's like, dude, that's so you're so not connecting the dots there. That's that's a whole separate video. But one of the things I wanted to talk to you about right now are behavioral changes you can implement immediately to help you manage your cravings, overeating, and all of that. Because the emotional stuff is going to take time. It's a lot of work and a lot of time. I myself still deal with all those demons, just far more effectively. You don't vanquish those demons, you just do battle with them more effectively and more efficiently. I would agree with that. Um, yeah, I would agree with that so far. But the behavioral stuff we can implement now right? And it makes a huge difference. So one of them is controlling your environment. You can't eat what isn't there, right? You just, you can't. So first thing is, if you've got the luxury, remove food, okay? That, that you don't want to binge on. Don't buy it. Don't stock it. If it's the, back in the day when we actually went to the office, it's the office kitchen, right? With the donuts and the bagels, bring your own food, get a fridge, put it under your desk, keep your food there so you're not going around that food because temptation is i mean it's everywhere right now i would i would agree with that 100 percent, and i'm sure that there there are always going to be to be caveats to anything that it, like whenever someone gives a tip about oh you should try and do this there are always people that are going to be like well i can't do that thing i can't do that thing i understand that right like there are a lot of people that can't just get rid of uh you know this food out of their house because they live with family and their family isn't trying to lose weight so soda is always going to be there and they just have to deal with it right but at the same time like if you can like whatever you're buying try and make sure you're not buying you know cookies and chips and things that you know are going to be hard for you not to say or that are going to be hard for you to say no to right? and willpower is a fleeting moment of bravado it's like a muscle that gets fatigued the more you expose yourself to temptation the more fatigued your willpower is going to get 
I can tell uh, a waiter, hey, um, sir, please don't bring the chips to the table. But if those chips or the bread basket go down on the table, it's over. Yep. I like that too. Like um, I've said this before is willpower is like a finite thing. Like you can, you can have willpower and you can like, well, okay, I'm not going to do this thing. I'm not going to do this thing. But eventually that willpower is going to run out and you're going to do that thing. Right. That's what that's what happened with me a lot when I struggle with binge eating, because I would have the willpower to say no to all of these foods. And I was very, very restrictive. But eventually that willpower would run out and slowly, slowly, slowly go down. And then I was like, I, I don't care anymore. And I would eat everything. So willpower. Certainly, I agree with that. It's over. I am eating that stuff. So I want you to think about how can you avoid right things that trigger you to eat if it's the kitchen at the office, if it's, you know, all the crap in your pantry, like don't buy it, don't go around it. Um, literally keep your own fridge at the office, surround yourself with positive images of the things you want to achieve. If it's uh, ads during your favorite shows, I, I mean, skip them, skip, don't watch, fast forward, buy the subscription on Spotify or whatever it is. If it's the food ads that are triggering you to, you know, run to the border. Sorry, Taco Bell. But bottom line is, right? Avoid it. Surround yourself with positive stuff that makes you inspired to be healthy and remove any temptation wherever you can. Now, this brings us to the second. Now, obviously, again, like I said, I agree with all of that stuff, but obviously not everyone is able to get a fridge at their office. Like, of course, anyone is going to be able to say, well, I can't do this thing, right? Then that, that tip obviously isn't going to be super helpful for you. But I mean, doing that is obviously not going to be harmful to you trying to lose weight. Tip, which is communication. Because maybe you're thinking, well, it's not that easy, right? Like my kids eat this or my husband or wife eats that. I get it. I've got a similar situation. So one of the things that I do is... I tell my kids or my girlfriend, I'm like, look, you know what? You guys want to eat this stuff? Like, do me a favor. You know, like they go, they go eat it in another room or I go upstairs. I give them their own drawer, their own cabinet. I never go near it. I never touch it. This is a great, this, I mean, this is something I've also brought up in the past as well. Like have communication with the people. Like if you are feeling stressed out about there being food in the house that maybe you're like, I don't know if I can say no to this. Like talk to the person that, that is bringing it into the house or whatever and be like, Hey, this is how I feel and try and have a conversation. I'm not saying that they're going to be like, well, I'm not going to eat that anymore. Right. Because that, I don't think that's fair for that person anyways, but maybe they can come up with an idea of like, okay, well, I won't have it in this area. I won't put it in this. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think that communication is also a really good idea. And it's removed from me. Like my girlfriend has her own pantry. I don't ever go into it. That's it. And as crazy as that may sound, look, if you find that you're struggling with eating that bag of chips, Put a lock on your husband's cabinet. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Don't judge it. Do whatever you need to do. And that means also communicating your needs to somebody, which is hard for a lot of us. So a lot of times we think like, well, if that person knew me, right, if they loved me, they would know what I need. No. And that's like some primal shit. That's like some six months old mommy can interpret my cries kind of stuff. I'm not kidding. <laughs> that's deep psychological stuff that we all have left over where it's like, if you love me, you'd intuit my needs. But that's not, that's not, that's not real life. People have their own stuff going on. They don't know what you need. They got their own needs. In fact, they might think you need something totally different because they're different than you. So you got to tell somebody what you need and you might need to do it a couple times. Yeah. I mean, communication is super key in any sort of relationship, but especially like a romantic relationship where you're living with someone. But 1000% communication, of course. Hey, you know what? Instead of going for happy hour, can we go shoot hoops together? Can we like start a, a movie night? I don't care. It's something healthier, something active. Let's do a spin class together. Let's take a yoga class together. Let's go on Zoom and work out together. There's now, I will say that this is this is difficult if you are in a relationship with someone. I know I saw a crazy st statistic. I always say that word wrong where um, people that have lost a lot of weight that were in a relationship um, like the the rate of like divorce or that that relationship not working out is really, really high. 
Um, and I, I, that makes sense, right? Because when you decide to lose weight, your, your hobbies and your interests probably change a lot. And the person you were with obviously was fine with how, what they were or for some people, right? Maybe that you were in a relationship where they were like, I really hope that you lose weight. But like if you're in a relationship where they're kind of fine with your weight and they were fine with the way things were, and then you start to lose weight, it's, it can be a really big strain on a relationship because then some people feel like now they think they're better than me because they are losing weight. And so it's, it's a really difficult, like relationships and weight loss are super difficult to navigate through. There's a million things you can do that obviously aren't food related, but it's about you communicating your needs to people. And it's not just, I'm trying to lose weight. It's, I'm trying to be healthier. This is what I need specifically. Give them the tools. Nobody's a mind reader, okay? And then one more thing I want you to think about. And this is, uh, this is an AA technique, actually. They, they call it thinking through the drink. And I want you to do that with food. So when we're caught on impulse, right? It's like just impulse, impulse, emotion, impulse. There's a part of your brain that's associated with impulsivity, and that's your amygdala. So you can actually shift the part of your brain that's thinking for you in that moment to your frontal lobe, which is the part of your brain that's associated with reason and logic. And the way you do it is by pausing. This is not just a food technique, by the way, it works <laughs> when you're about to tell your boss to shove it or you know say something to your spouse that you regret. Pause and ask yourself a couple of questions. What am I really feeling right now? Are you really feeling physically hungry? Right? Are you stressed? Are you anxious? Are you sad? Are you mad? Okay. Um, you know, how am I going to feel if I eat this in the moment? Good. How do you feel when it's done? Right? So this is, this is a huge thing that I think, um, helps me tremendously now where I am in my journey. Because a lot of people ask me, uh, are, do you ever have cravings for like McDonald's, right? I've, I've talked about my McDonald's that I used to order all the time. Two McDoubles, two McChickens, a large fry and a large drink. Sometimes chicken McNuggets. Uh, like that was a pretty normal thing that I would eat. People ask me, like, do, you ever th do you ever miss that? Would you ever see yourself eating that now? And like, while I do think it would still taste good to me, I'm not going to sit here and say McDonald's french fries now taste bad because I have lost a lot of weight. That's ridiculous, right? Probably tastes delicious still. I haven't had them in a long time. But I do what she's explaining. I think through it. Okay, so if I ate those things, how am I going to feel while I'm eating it? Probably going to feel pretty good, tastes great. But then how am I going to feel an, after, an hour after eating those things? I'm probably going to feel really, really terrible. And for the rest of the day, I know my body with the amount of sodium and stuff. I'm going to be super bloated. And for me, it's just like this is no longer worth it to me. I don't want to eat this anymore. This is... There's there's no part of me that even though I know it would taste super good in the moment, I'm like, I know how it's going to make me feel afterwards. And that always takes away the thought of, oh, man, it'd be so fun to eat, you know, this McDonald's order or whatever. And when you finished it, bad, guilty, disappointed in myself. How do you feel at the end of the week? Like, think it through. I've talked about this before. Play it all the way out. And this allows you to not react. It gives you some emotional regulation. And it's those impulsive decisions that always cost us in life, personally, professionally, physically. So those are my three behavioral techniques you can implement right now. Remove temptation, communicate your needs to others in detail, tell them what you need and how to support you, and take a pause before you eat anything and think the scenario all the way through. Now, I, everything that she said in the video, I, I pretty much agree with. The one thing I would add to this, especially if you're at the start of your journey, is plan things out. Because if you have planned things out in your diet and in your nutrition and in th through your whatever fitness regime you decide to do, even if that's going on walks, if you plan those things out, beforehand so you have your food when you go to the office you have the snacks that you know that you want to eat you know that after you get off work you're going to be going on a walk like there's nothing that's going to get in the way of that that is also a really really huge helpful thing for people especially if we're used to just getting the easiest thing to eat you know we're not used to cooking very often so we don't want to uh you know we're not going to change our schedule and then all of a sudden now we're going to spend 30 minutes to 45 minutes every night making dinner instead 
plan and maybe even do meal prep or whatever and be like, okay, when I get home, I know I have this food. So there's no reason for me to stop at McDonald's. There's no reason for me to stop at XYZ place. Like that 100% I think is also a really good thing to add. But yeah, I mean, Jillian Michaels, I agree with you this time. <laughs> Obey the warning signs, and when there are flashing lights or wigwags, don't attempt to cross until they come to a complete stop.